This video is made possible by Curiosity Stream. I gotta tell you about some of the most insane jazz in one of the most unexpected places. Mobile Suit Gundam Thunderbolt was a Japanese manga turned anime in 2015, and the soundtrack is, well, a little bit unexpected. We've got things like this. <laughs> And a little bit of this. And even a little bit of this. But the craziest part about it is that, well you may have noticed with the album covers there, it looks like some sort of sci-fi robot thing. Well, that would be correct. And just check out how this manifests in these scenes. Talk about not the soundtrack you expect for this particular scenario. Also, talk about some epic action going on. The music for Gundam Thunderbolt was composed by Nariyoshi Kikuchi. The show's main character is a pilot of one of these mobile suits. His name is Eo Fleming, and he happens to be a jazz enthusiast, and apparently part of the storyline is inside the cockpit of this suit, he listens to this. <laughs> Wow, okay, so first of all, there is some very interesting, influential things going on here that I sort of picked up on. I'm curious, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this because if we, if we dive a little further into this, we hear... <laughs> Bass clarinet. This type of style. There's a couple influences that I'm hearing and it's super interesting that it's used in this context. But first of all, let's just check out a little bit of Miles Davis' second quintet. This is a performance from Italy in 1964. Listen to this. <laughs> That's Wayne Shorter and uh, Tony Williams, uh, Ron Carter, Herbie Hancock, Miles Davis, one of the best groups ever. A lot of the characteristics of Miles' second quintet in the 60s, I feel, has a lot of, you know, this was sort of the start of that kind of jazz feel where you might consider it to be a little more, not free, but but a little less honed in. If you listen to Miles Davis's 1958 record, Kind of Blue, you're gonna hear a very, what we consider to be very straight ahead, like cool jazz, I guess would, would have been one of the things at the time that they might have called it. And uh, this is sort of an evolution of that. It's less locked into chord changes and rhythms and things like that, and it's able to move around a lot more. And so what I'm hearing in a lot of the Gundam sort of feel here, <laughs> First of all, the band is fantastic. Another thing I want to point out that a lot of you are probably thinking right now, the bass clarinet edition, let's listen to a little bit of Eric Dolphy. <laughs> So, you can clearly hear everything comes from something, right? I'm hearing a lot of that that uh, Eric Zalfi kind of influence, the Miles Davis second quintet kind of influence, and this isn't totally free, but we're certainly hearing a little more of the avant-garde. To be totally honest, this approach to jazz, it's not my favorite. I tend to like things a little more locked into harmony. I want to hear more of the harmony, but what I really like sometimes about this type of stuff is the energy. The energy, even though the harmonic information isn't necessarily as easy to follow, the energy is always pretty great and pretty insane, and that's what we can see in that Eric Dolphy clip, that's what we can see in the Miles stuff, and that's what we can hear on this soundtrack. And that is one of the things that is so exciting about it, and the fact that it's used in this! <laughs> Yeah. 
it so weirdly fits, right? Because it's this crazy chaos happening and like this big battle thing and all this stuff blowing up and things flying everywhere and like that's kind of what we're hearing. So in some bizarre way, it actually works really well. Five. my opinion. It's a lot of fun to play. I don't know how fun it is to listen to. Now this is a great example because this band is fantastic and oddly enough we couldn't really find much information about the actual players in the band. So if anybody knows more specifics about the individuals who, who performed this music, I please let me know in the comments below because they're phenomenal. But one of the things that's interesting about this particular style of playing, so what we hear is a bass line and a drum groove, right? And overall the thing is in five. <laughs> something going on in E here. But then when the piano comes in, I'd have to listen to it a little further, but what I'm guessing is happening is that there are two pianos because it's stereo split. I'm thinking it's two pianos, whether it's at the same time communicating with each other or one was recorded and then one was recorded after the fact, kind of like Conversations with Myself by Bill Evans. <laughs> So my guess is this was probably the same pianist and recorded two separate takes layered together to kind of create this call and response, not call and response, but a little bit of a communicative style of playing, which is super cool in this particular context. Now, something that I learned in, uh, in, in school when we get together and we do things like play all the things you are for 20 minutes and think that that's what somebody wants to listen to, we sometimes play things like this sort of free exploration. Now, it's really, really valuable as a musician because it allows you to explore different concepts and improvisation that you otherwise might not have explored. And when you give yourself that permission to play things that you might consider to sound bad or things that you're like, well, I don't know what chords to play. It's like, who cares? It's not really important at the moment. It's a fantastic exploration tool. It can really help you push your improvisational ability forward. But I've always felt like this stuff is super fun to play, but I'm not sure how much I'd necessarily put an audience through it. Now, there are obviously exceptions to this. I can remember one of the most influential shows I ever saw in my life was Chick Corea's Five Piece Band. This was my first introduction to Brian Blade as a drummer, and I couldn't get over how exciting the music was. And I went back and heard some recordings of that, and I was like, that's really out. <laughs> like, like the, the, the harmony is super out, it's more free-ish in this kind of context, but the one thing that was absolutely incredible is just the energy of the band on stage and the way they would communicate and bring things together, whether it was an improvisational bring coming together or whether it was actually in the form of whatever tune they were playing. <laughs> So it's just this really cool sort of back and forth conversational style of playing between two pianos. This is really fun to do in person. I've played, you know, dueling pianos with somebody before and it's it's a lot of fun. You're both passing ideas to each other in real time and you can kind of elaborate on those ideas and build things out of those ideas and it's a, it's a blast to do. But even if you were doing it again, like in the style of Bill Evans' conversations with myself, which may be what they did here, I don't actually know. But even if you were recording one and then the other and layering them together to be this back and forth conversation thing. That's also super fun to do as well. And the result, as we can hear here, is uh, is really cool. Best Valentine's Day it was. I yeah. know for sure because ring for a good night. Ooh. Wow, listen to that. Because ring for a good night. Yeah. I could not go to sleep. My blue white oh. Be... Wow, a lot of chromatic movement there. Check this out. So Oh, what a beautiful melody because look. That first line is on C, which is the third of our A minor seventh chord. Oh man, that note for me, that's what makes this line so beautiful because we're, we're climbing down in this chromatic motion. 
right? So we have. Wow, beautiful. Yeah, and then. Oh, yeah, yeah. That is gorgeous. Sure, because. Ah. I could not go to sleep in my blue white Yeah. Oh, that's so exciting. It's so cool to hear music that is so intelligently written like this, full of great harmony and great chord motion. I mean, we literally just climbed down chromatically into the start of that next section. We went. A to E chromatically, A minor 7, A flat minor 7, G minor 7, and then I think this was like a uh, G flat major 7 sharp 11, something like that. I might have shifted while the chord was playing, but then we have this minor 11, minor 11, whoo, back up. Oh, it's just, it's so full of great harmony. By the way, the Harmony course is fully out. You can find it at the link in the description right now. We are running a 30% off sale. You don't need a code or anything. It's right in the description. Just click the link. It's a fantastic course taught by Debbie DeJesus, the director of jazz studies at Purchase College, my alma mater. He was my professor, taught me everything I know. It's a fantastic course. He put a ton of work into it. Go check it out. It's got everything you need to know to develop your mastery of harmony so that you can hear stuff like this and know what's going on. A minor seven, A flat minor seven, G minor seven. G flat major seven sharp 11, that took me a second. F minor 11, E minor 11, what a beautiful transition. <laughs> F blues. Nice bass player, real nice, real nice stuff. <laughs> There are so many different variations to the blues. There's so many different ways you can play, so many different ways you can turn it around to get back to the top. And this one, it seems like they're doing pretty much all the normal stuff. Right, and then on to the four. works. I'm just blown away by the music in this series. It's such a great way to score scenes that we would typically expect to have this orchestral, epic, you know, whatever, or maybe like fast-paced techno or something like that. I, I'm not even sure of like what we typically expect to hear, but it's certainly not this. Look at that! Look at that! The trumpet doing the thing with the guns and the stuff, it just... What? That is just so crazy to me, and it's so awesome to hear, and the music is fantastic, the band is fantastic. Good job, everybody. Yikes, this is just unbelievable. If you know any other anime that has insane music just like this, let me know in the comments below, because I'm dying to check it out. This is chaotic and crazy, and I like it. Hey, if you're interested in checking out some exclusive and extended content that you've never seen here on this YouTube channel, then consider using the link in the description to check out Nebula. Nebula is a streaming service that a bunch of like-minded creators, including myself, came together to create where we would be unbounded by the restrictions of the YouTube algorithm. Sometimes I can't post a video that's 45 minutes long talking about the benefits or some tips on going to music school because YouTube just wouldn't show it to anyone. So instead we came together to create a place where we could make content that would not be subject to those restrictions. You can find all of our videos that go on the main channel ad free as well as some exclusive pieces of content that you've never seen here. And it's all available through the sponsor of today's video, Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream is home to thousands of the internet's best documentaries on so many different subjects. It's an absolutely incredible resource. And being an educational platform, Curiosity Stream loves educational content creators, which is why we've been able to come together to create this amazing bundle. Right now, when you use the link in the description, not only will you receive 26% off an annual subscription to Curiosity Stream, which winds up being less than $15 
not per month, per year, at less than $15 a year, but you'll also get access to Nebula for free. It's an incredible bundle and it's made possible by CuriosityStream, where you can find incredible documentaries on so many different topics, including things about music. You can use computers to do crazy, exciting, creative things. The experiment makes only one demand. So be sure to check out the link in the description and go check out some of my exclusive content on Nebula. We hope to see you over there. And thank you so much to CuriosityStream for sponsoring this video. That's gonna do it for me today. Thank you so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. My heroes are like uh, Herbie Hancock, Quincy Jones, uh, Chick Corea, Oscar Peterson, and Herbie Hancock specifically, like the Sunlight album is just one of my yes. favorite albums of all time.